morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, on the, and it's glorious morning in, in Ireland. I was going to say Dublin, but in Ireland because I think it's it's uh, uh, statewide. Um, and welcome to our webinar, uh, exploring our providing insights into the diploma in corporate governance. So, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is, is Dr. Margaret Cullen, and I have the privilege of being a faculty member on the diploma in corporate governance. So, briefly, by way of background. Um, the UTD Centre for Corporate Governance was established in 2002 by Professor Neve Brennan, the Michael McCormack uh, Professor of Management in University College Dublin. And Professor Brennan has this image, this vision rather, of creating this research centre that would promote research and deliver um, quality research in the area of corporate governance. But there's also a strong um, training teaching learning dimension to the Centre for Corporate Governance that, that has prevailed to this day. And with that in mind, Professor Brennan established the Diploma in Corporate Governance in 2005. So this forthcoming academic year is going to be the 17th academic year of this programme, which is a fantastic achievement. And the programme has evolved wonderfully over that time. I've had the privilege to teach on this programme or lecture on this programme since 2005. So this is going to be my 15th year. Um, which has been, without a doubt, probably the highlight of my professional life to be involved in this programme. But I could wax lyrical about this programme um, all morning, and we're not going to because we're going to speak to our alumni and to enable you to get a sense of their perspectives on it and, and how they approach the programme and enjoy the programme. So I'm very pleased to be joined by three alumni, and I must have graded them very fairly for them to agree to come back and, uh, and speak with us this morning. So in, in no particular order, I'm going to start with, with Ronan Horgan, and Ronan is the Chief Executive Officer of Capital Flow, and he is a graduate of the class of 2021, so very new out of the blocks there, Ronan, okay? Um, we also have Lucy Masterson, who is a graduate of the class of 2019, and Lucy is the CEO of the Irish Youth Foundation. And last but definitely not least, another graduate of that class of 2019, is Port Kenny, and Port Kenny is Managing Director Ireland of um, OB, or OBC Investor and Treasury Services. So you are all very welcome, and, and, and thank you, thank you for taking the time this morning. Let's just kind of kick off, I suppose, with, 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 with a couple of easy ones. And uh, um, I, I suppose, can I ask you? And I'll start with you, Ronan, and we'll, we'll, we'll jump in and out. Um, Ronan, what made you choose? Um, the Diploma of Corporate Governance. I mean, what, what was your, what was the catalyst and what were the kind of the, the things that you thought of your thought process in deciding to study with UCD? Yeah, thanks for yes. Good morning to you and to, to everybody else who's joined in. Um, I suppose there's kind of probably two or three reasons really why, why I um, decided to kind of go on to, for further education. I'd left school at, at 18. I hadn't gone to college and uh, spent all my career, I suppose, working um, very much focused on the career um, and not on necessarily on education. My wife then, who's been a long-suffering wife for a long time, uh, did a master's in, in career guidance and uh, in DCU and very much into further education. So she really encouraged me. And then thirdly, I heard, uh, heard Neve actually on the radio a couple of years back. And I really liked the whole international dimension of the program and how you compare that to, to other markets and sectors and stuff like that. So, so I suppose those are kind of the three reasons why why I went on it, and, and I have to say I was delighted that I did. Brilliant. Cork, do you want to jump in there? Anything similar or, or, or slightly different to, to Ronan's rationale? Uh, thank you, Margaret, and uh, good morning to you and good morning to everybody. Um, well, look, and, and corporate governance, I work for a financial company and, and corporate governance, uh, as you know very well, Margaret, was becoming a bigger and bigger thing. Um, so in looking around for where I could just get some sort of academic, um, you know, insights and, and something up to date on what was going on, um, UCD was almost the first place that I was aware of, really, um, Neve herself, but also the programme. And uh, I think the other thing that made a very big difference for me was the the personal referrals from from alumni who had passed through your hands, Margaret. And um, maybe it's the reason for for putting on something like this this morning, is um, people's personal insights and people's personal motivation for um, choosing the UCD program um, is a, was a very important thing for me. That's fantastic. It's great to hear from the horse's mouth, which is why why we're here. Um, Lucy, have anything to add? And in particularly, you know, I, I'd be interested in, in, in Lucy your thought process when it came to to, to picking, um, you know, in pursuit of a governance qualification, a corporate governance qualification. What was your thought process in looking at UCD? 
Sure. Well, I, I mean, for me as a UCD graduate, um, like Ronan, but like I had, I haven't been back to further education for over twenty years, longer, in fact. Um, working in the charity sector, and at the time I was working in an umbrella body for all of the kind of the largest fund fundraising charities in the country and so people will be aware that we would have come through the sector had taken a battering in the previous number of years so I just took it upon myself if I was going to be on doing media interviews or talking to people about the importance of governance with a brand new charity regulator in place I need to put my money where my mouth is and um, so that was the reason why I, I, I decided to go and um, do the course and for me it was a no-brainer again uh, I went to the session like this to hear firsthand from from alumni and I did my research on the course and yeah so it was absolutely um, there was no other no other option other than uh, choosing the UCD course so yeah never looked back really enjoyed it. Very good. And I think actually, even from what we, where we see, you know, the, the three people before, uh, here here on the panel today, it's the diversity of the class, I think, that, and we, we will pick that up later. And I'm also will, interested, Lucy, to tap that, that 20 year gap in education, which is a little bit daunting for, for, for students. And we will pick that up a little bit later. But can I ask, um, um, you know, staying with you, Lucy, what did you enjoy most about the programme when you reflect back? Um, so I was thinking about this last night and I just, there's kind of a couple of points I just jotted down. Firstly, I met people I would never have met in a million years. Uh, you know, I now have people who I, you know, I would never have probably met Porg. I would never have met people, I have friends in the central bank now. I've got people who are working in totally different sectors. Um, and we all just gelled really, really well. And I really loved the, the diversity of different thought processes and people coming from completely different backgrounds. Um, all of us, I think, were really daunted about going back to, to education because for all of us, we were in the workforce a long time. Um, so that was kind of, so we all kind of bonded very quickly around that. So um, what was really lovely about that diverse, I suppose, set of skill sets and thought processes is there was, we all had different approaches to problem solving. And so when we would have group, uh, there was a lot of group Group work which was great and I found areas where I found kind of I, I was unsure of there was others who would step in and there was almost this peer-to-peer -peer kind of coaching and mentoring which was really really lovely and um, so through that teamwork it really brought forward each individual's strengths and it also highlighted to yourself, I suppose, areas that I would have, you know, I was always acutely aware of my weaknesses, but this almost, you know, in a way brought forward, okay, well, there's areas that I have strengths that can also perhaps match, match those weaknesses. So that was really, really good. And, um, and also I have to say, like, everything is done for you. It was just, you know, all you have to do is turn up and be open to learning and um, because I, I just couldn't credit the, the the team in terms of all of your you know your books your notes everything was just done for you so you really really all you had to do is just be in the moment when you turned up to class and uh, and, and just really enjoy it so that's a huge piece as well when you're coming from a busy day in work or you've lots of other stuff going on in your head and lastly what I will say is I know everybody talks about the COVID stone uh, there's the corporate governance UCD corporate governance stone I think we all put on the, f the food the catering <laughs> the socializing in between was just you know astonishing so really that was I suppose for me um, the the kind of what I really enjoyed most out of out of the the, the course. That's wonderful, Lucy. Do you know what, Lucy? The secret sauce you've mentioned, and Siobhan, Siobhan Walsh, who was our um, uh, Siobhan Lane Walsh, who was our program manager, is is very much the secret sauce. As was Lisa Knight, who who went before yeah. her. I think it's really important to mention. And Lucy, would you believe us that even in the COVID world, we managed to get food to the class? Isn't that right, Rowan? <laughs> 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 so we yeah. they didn't they didn't miss out on the food. <laughs> uh, but isn't there anything that you would you would add to, to that the high spots the high points um, what, what do you enjoy the most sorry i missed that margaret is that for pori oh no ronnie can you I'll, I'll go to you first can you yeah all right okay no i think uh, to be honest with you lucy <laughs> lucy's described it really really well um and very enthusiastically and i, and I absolutely agree i mean getting a group of students from completely different backgrounds if you mentioned central bank civil service private companies um, and actually just having people who are mature enough to kind of be open to listening to one another. You learn so much from that. You learn so much from the group assignments um, and, you know, all the other stuff that Lucy said about, 
you know, preparation and everything done for you was, was, was what I found a huge help because I wouldn't have been that prepared um, to go back into further education. And also you've got a busy day job, uh, like everybody else probably on, on this call today, that you're kind of, so having all that prepared, I think also for me, the big learning was the different types of, of um, the modules. You know what I mean? I think there's, is there 11 modules? There's 12 be, modules. 12, 12 modules, yeah. yeah. Okay, so 12 modules. So you have a lot of different topics and subjects to cover. And then you have different lectures with different styles, which I thought was brilliant. And that was one of the things that Neve said, we don't try to teach the lecturers to all teach in the same style. They're allowed to go and be themselves. And, and I, I found that really, really refreshing. And um, yeah, that, that for me, they were, they were kind of the, the key things. I think that the group discussions, um, we didn't obviously meet a lot of the time because it was remote, but we still managed to have group discussions and challenges and stuff like that. And, as you say, some bits you're weak on, some bits you're actually strong on. And that strong bit actually surprised me if I was able to actually engage where I, where I thought initially I, I wouldn't be able to. So yeah, no, they, they, were, they were the same things for me. Yeah, and I think, Ronan, it's an important aspect there when you talk about, um, you know, with, with, with Professor Neve Brandon and the academic license that she gives to the lecturers, because, you know, Professor Brandon has structured the programme to, um, you know, to flow and you almost get that A to Z journey that actually probably only becomes apparent on the last day when you can look back and see how all the joins, the, the dots are joined. Exactly. Um, but I think the depth are given agility, they're given the freedom that, uh, to, to, to kind of adapt as the world evolves. Um, I had first hand experience of that this year with taking over Pierce Kent's uh, module on responsibilities of directors because I was able to bring in that ESG dimension and so on. So there's, there's that agility in the program, which I think is really key to a success. Um, or anything to add apart from the food? We've got, we've had the food. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Always important. Um, well, look, I, I would like to add that that the the, the points that have, have been made about the, the diversity of the class, and I, I've been working in the financial services industry for a very long time, and and just getting exposure um, to completely different industries. Um, to, to to Lucy's area in the charities, for example, where there's there's so much going on. Um, just expanding my own horizons. And uh, for, for me, part of it was, was uh, I, I graduated from UCD the, for the first time in, in, in 1981. So it had, been a, it had been a long time since I'd been, been back in, in student life. And uh, it, was, uh, that was, it, was, it, was, it was very good to get back to it. It was very good to get back to a class. And um, I do agree with the point about the, the diversity of the, the teaching styles that uh, for, for, for me, uh, actually, the, the, there was there was great variety on, on, on it, and uh, in, in the materials, obviously, but uh, the different um, lecturers there, uh, I think, were 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 um, you know made a really big difference for me. Okay. Nineteen eighty one, Porek, you obviously were a child genius. We'll leave it at that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, look, um, in the interest of fairness, because you know, uh, you know, obviously, I, 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 I um, e eat and sleep both uh, governance and education. Um, but you know, it, it, it's not all smooth sailing. So, we'll be interested to see what were the what were the kind of I suppose the more challenging aspects about the program. What did you find, um, you know, a little bit challenging? You know, um, Porek, can I start with you? Uh, yes, well, going back to 1981, um, <laughs> having to do a written exam, okay, I don't want to put people off, but yeah. I think the, the plus of the written exam was the open book format, and uh, so it, it was more familiarity with the material than having to just internalise every single thing that that, that, that we covered. Um, but it's it's like a lot of things that are that are may, maybe seem difficult approaching them or even within them that afterwards to have done it to have have done that material being able been being able to to deal with the exam part of, of, of the programme um, was a, a, a challenge, but something that I think was very, very worthwhile to have, 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 have dealt with. Okay. Um, and, and maybe just one other thing, um, Margaret, that struck me was the, the, the challenge of dealing, uh, work, working in groups uh, with, with people who have different backgrounds, different academic backgrounds, different business backgrounds. And, um, you know, you can think, well, look, I, I know everything and what can a person who comes from a completely different area really, really know? But there's something there's something there from from everybody that everybody contributed. And uh, I think the contribution of the class, but 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 just um, I think the challenge of 
opening your mind to what other other people can can contribute to a discussion um, was a very good and, and interesting thing for me. Absolutely, and what we should see in the boardroom for it, isn't that right? Which is a, a <laughs> good training ground. Lucy, anything to, to, to add to that? Um, I, I totally agree with Porik on everything he said. Juggling time with work is a big thing as well. It's a big commitment. It's, you know, two days a week. It's full. On, so you and, and there is, you know, there is group work at weekends. It's not just coming in. You know, there's follow up work to be done. So so it is a commitment. But um, but once you know you're signed up for it, uh, I think that's that's that, that's really important. Personally, for me, I am. Um, there were a lot of accountants in the room. Uh, when I was doing the course and for me I've uh, like all things numerical and you know finance stuff is like an alien language to me so I felt kind of out of my depth in that particular uh, area but what I would say in terms of that because there is 12 modules and because there is such choice in your exam that you know you you can work it if there are subjects that you feel out of depth with and um, that's okay as long as you just turn up and you, you do them, learn as much as you can, and then are selective then about which ones you're really going to study for for, for your written exam. Um, so so that was that was the only th thing that worried me because the, the, the finance piece. Um, but I have to say, as somebody who has really poor, <laughs> fair, not good at all with numbers, I still managed to pass. So don't let that put anybody off. <laughs> well, look, you know, it, there's no one no one better than Ken O'Sullivan to, to take a yeah. very difficult technical subject and translate it into something yeah. accessible. And I think that that's, but it's an, it's, it's an important point. And again, like, like in the boardroom, we all bring our strengths. We all yeah. bring our strengths and we harness that collective strength. A absolutely. Ronan, anything to add to that? Was there anything that you found challenging over and above the... Um, yeah, no, I, I'd agree. I'd agree with uh, with uh, what Lucy was saying there in, in terms of, of, you know, having subjects that maybe you're out of your depth on. The good thing about the assignments, though, is that you get to learn a lot about the subjects in a practical way by being in the, those working groups, um, and you learn from other from other team members that you that you're in with. I think um, like there's two halves to the program. You know, the the first the first half for me was the most challenging um, because you really had to kind of get your head into the theory of corporate governance and get into the legal and the regulatory framework and the history of the UK corporate governance code. So you really kind of had to, you know, dig deep in, in, into that. And actually the essential readings prior to the lectures are so important mm -hmm. um, that you get time to, to to read those because they give you a sense of what the lecture is going to be about and what you might want to get from that lecture. So the first half is, is definitely a bit trickier, but you get the rewards then by, you know, having done the, the open book exam in, in December time, the forex says you get through it, you, you get over all of the, the fears that you had. And you really start the new year then going, great, look, look what I've got ahead of me, because the, the second half is flies, as far as I can see anyway, or I experienced was, it just flew, and it, and it was really, really enjoyable, you know? So, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's what I would say the challenge is, rather than it being yeah. necessarily difficult. Yeah, and actually, do you know what, Ronnie? You make a very important point because that first semester, um, you know, was designed by Professor Brennan. I mean, you know, you're laying the bricks, you're laying the foundations to what is to follow. And absent a good understanding of the theoretical underpinnings that drives a lot of corporate governance uh, agendas, policies, but also the, the legal and regulatory framework within which you operate, absent that, it's very hard to contextualise what follows. So, um, uh, well, and I find when I, because I teach before Christmas and after Christmas, I often find there's a lot more relaxed in the second semester about things. Mm -hmm. We've been through it once and you, and you get, and you realise we're all still alive and, and, and we managed to, we really yeah, yeah, died, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's a very good point. But look, you know, we, we've touched on it a couple of, t of times and, you know, I, just find that the most rewarding thing I, I, I have because I teach mostly executive education is to see people return into the classroom and invest in themselves and this is what this is about this is about investing in yourself and your, com your company will be a, a derivative beneficiary of that but investing in yourself and your own professional career but um, so in terms of that um, you know the, the diploma can mark the return to um, education after a long absence you know Lucy you, you alluded to already was there anything, and I'll start with you, Ronan, was there anything that surprised you um, about your own journey having returned? Was there anything that surprised you about yourself? Yeah, do you know, do you know what really surprised me was um, 
how much the by going on the program I could switch off from the day job. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I thought that was really weird because I was just going to say, well, this is going to be just more time, more work, more energy being put in on top of the day job. But in actual fact, what it did for me, and it was during COVID as well, so there was a lot of challenges going on in, in, in the day job, we've got it. Um, and the program was a switch off, if, if I'm being honest. So I actually was able to, to go into that program, spend, you know, as Lucy was talking about, it, it is a fair commitment, you know, with your two, two days a week, three hour lectures, you've got assignments to the weekends and stuff like that. But it actually helped me switch. It's helped me switch off from COVID as well, to be honest with you. Um, so using it in that positive way rather than using it as a chore was was a big surprise for me and actually would now have me think, well, could I do something else to help me switch off and get the brain working in a different way? Um, and then the other bit was the encouragement to participate. So your voice even if you, you feel that you well, you haven't got the masters or you haven't been on the modules in the last you know, couple of years or whatever, or you have other people who are much more educated in, in certain ways, that you're being encouraged to participate. So, so that was great from, from my perspective because I love participating, but I wasn't sure if I was going to be so able to. So I was, I was surprised with that as well. Lucy, do you any, that's the, thank you so much, Ron. I'm going to pick up on a couple of things there in a second. Lucy, anything to add to that from your own your journey? I mean, you said 20 years. Um, yeah, it was longer. It was 1988 when I graduated. Yeah, so it is. It, I was nervous going back. I have to say my ability to be able to kind of, when I left school, it was all just learning by rote and just how will I be able to, your, your confidence definitely takes a, how will I be able to keep up? And on day one, when you're sitting in the room and you see all of these people, you know, from all these different sectors, uh, you're going, I, I kind of felt at the beginning this kind of slight imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, but after literally the first kind of lecture and stuff, you're kind of going, oh my God, why didn't I do this earlier? Uh, so yeah, it's fantastic. And you get a really sense of achievement. Going back to learning later in life, you really, you value listening to the lectures rather than kind of, it's Monday morning, it's nine o'clock, I'm just going to give this one a skip and, you know, get the notes. You really want it. There's such a difference between being a mature student and the undergrad experience. So, yeah, I really, I really relished it second time around in terms of the learning. Uh, so that's, that's all really to add. Can't believe you ever skipped classes in undergrad, Lucy. I'm shocked. Only Monday shocked. mornings. <laughs> <laughs> we all did, Lucy. Borg, anything else? I mean, is there anything that, you know, in terms of your journey surprised you about yourself? Um, well, look, for, I, I maybe would just add that I I also thought it would be difficult to fit in with my with my job. I thought my job was a sort of all-consuming kind of thing. And um no, it was it was it was possible and actually it was it was refreshing to 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 spend a certain amount of time during those weeks and months um on something that was related but actually quite different from what I what I, what I was doing every day mm. and um I I found it was manageable and I found it was uh really enjoyable all all, all the way through um the materials and um how much actually I would have enjoyed the the contributions I've said it before of other people up to the discussion not 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 only the lecturers but other people on the program who had these different perspectives different experiences and different kind of backgrounds yeah thanks for it and I think this is the beauty of exec ed I mean and, and executive you know executive education because you know I certainly know when I walk into that classroom my sole objective is to leverage the the, the strength of the wisdom <laughs> professional experience in that room and that was something that Professor Brennan taught me very early on, you know, get in there and, and, and leverage that as much as you can. So very often, even as a, as a lecturer, you can stand back and just allow the flow and the engagement and the disagreements to, to, to pan out. No one to pull it back in, of course, but, but allow it to, to progress. I think that wonderful diversity of perspectives um, that we can bring back and, and, and um, to our own organisations and reflect on, regardless of our, our sector, is really, really powerful. Um, and I think like even as a even as a lecturer, we all have imposter syndrome. You know, if you're if you're you're going in and you know people, you, you're you're looking at the caliber of people before you. But you know that's the beauty of it; it's a safe place. Um, can we jump to the more practical side of things, if if I may? Um, can maybe I, I, I'll start with you, um, Porik, if I may. 
what were the, I suppose, the most important takeaways from a practical business application that you took? I mean, obviously, we'd be here all day if you told them everything for it, but the, one of the, the, the top two or three uh, key practical business application um, takeaways for you. Well, uh, <clears throat> Margaret, I, I mentioned that I had, um, within my work, being becoming more and more exposed to, to, to corporate governance and the Central Bank of Ireland, in my case, um, having higher and higher expectations. And um, I had been involved in it for a long time, but I'd never studied it and was never fully familiar with the latest um, academic thinking or the latest um, sort of legal, legal frameworks. So what was brought back um, to me, even as the course was, was going on, was um, certainty and confidence that I was current with what was going on in the whole area of corporate governance. And some of it is obviously the history where Neil Brennan gives us a very strong grounding in the foundations, but some of it was right up to date in a legal and theoretical way. And the other thing uh, that was for me very useful was actually some of the very practical examples that emerge of what was going on in the area of corporate governance and where corporate governance can be so challenging and have such a huge impact on a business if not handled properly with a, with a proper kind of understanding. And that was, it was almost from day one and I was having to resist back in my, in, in my work saying, well, look, I've, 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 I've now studied this and I know this, but it starts to just be brought into, uh, in my case, day-to-day day, day -day work and um, is something that immediately back then and, and right up to now, maybe, maybe we, we, we need a bit of a refresher because things are changing all the time. Um, but that, that was uh, something that was, um, really applicable from uh, the, the very first time on the on the on the program. Very good, thank you, uh, Lucy. You operate in a very a very um, unique sector, if you don't mind me saying. And uh, so, from you, any any key practical, um, you know, immediate applications? Well, for me, it was. For me, I think the the biggest takeaway and also the light bulb moment is that I. I suddenly realized how little I knew. Um, and it is that I remember having a chat with Neve Brennan one day going, oh my God, I had no idea. And she said, well, isn't that great? Because now this is the, the risk, the unknown risk. Now, you know, it's there. And it's, you know, what you don't, when you're aware of what you don't know. And, you know, uh, uh, you know I work in the charity sector. So, you know, uh, many boards in the charity sector are, you know, are run by passionate volunteers, but with, probably little uh, governance uh, experience. So coming through that course for me, um, you know, you, you just can't have a sector that is run by well-intentioned volunteers um, around a board table. So, so for me, the very practical takeaways where, you know, and especially now in my new role, um, working in a foundation where we are grant makers, um, you know, it's, I would see very much so what I learned on that course as a privilege to be able to then share with some of the smaller projects and charities who we fund who just governance just it's not doesn't even come into their every day they're just too busy trying to run the organizations that they're running and to keep things keep things going so to be able to have um that you know somebody like like myself or to be able to lean into to say look this is the governance code I've got to do for the charity sector. What does this mean and what does that mean? So for me, I, I saw it very much so as a way where I can be able to share some of that very practical. I still have all of the notes. I still have all of the kind of, you know, all of the, the kind of reports that we were given the most up, you know, which is still up to date on, on what needs to be uh, adhered to within the charity sector and broader governance. So for me, the very practical tools of, of, good practice, best practice, compliance within the charity sector was just invaluable because, you know, a lot of the time, I think the issues that arise in our sector is that people just simply aren't aware of, of that they're about to step on a landmine. So that was for me a huge learning. Yeah, and, I, and I think, Lucy, that's 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 great. And I, and I, th I think it's, it's understanding that there are core governance principles and how do you apply them to your context? 
yeah. and really reflect. And that's a huge part of governance is that application to context uh, and so on. Thanks, Lucy, for that. We, 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 and really good insight. Rona, any light bulb moments for you? I mean, I'm very happy to hear about the practical application. I mean, I know you professionally have had a busy year, Ronan, um, but yeah. any, any light bulb moments or, or strong practical applications for you? Yeah, just think, just sorry, just on the practical, uh, the business yeah. applications. I mean, I've worked in financial services for 25 years and I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly in, in, in banking, you know, in terms of corporate governance. And then we set up Capital Flow in 2016 is very much a startup business. So, so you're not thinking hugely about governance and stuff like that. So when I started the, the, the program, uh, the first thing I, I noticed was that I was the CEO and I was the chairman <laughs> on the board. And I found that quite a stressful, uh, uh, you know, having to do that every month uh, at, at board meetings. So, of course, a light bulb moment was, you know, learning that you can split the roles and you, you can change, you can get the non-execs to be more involved, get them take on responsibilities. So we set up subcommittees, we have governance groups, different subgroups within the business. And we really started putting the governance framework into capital flow about a year ago. And actually that's going to really stand to us now because we've just announced that our acquisition is we're being acquired by a bank um, who are regulated by the Dutch Central Bank. So, you know, supervision there and, and regulatory oversight is going to be key to that. Um, but I think the light bulb moment for me is much more personal because the first day we had to do, I don't know if you guys had to do a role play of, uh, of a board and uh, somebody nominated me as, as chair anyway, um, which and I found it really tricky, you know, standing up in class and trying to do a role play and all of those insecurities that you have on, on your first day anyway. Um, but I always remember leaving the leaving UCD that evening and just Neve kind of giving me a wry smile as if to say, you're going to be fine. And I, actually that was that was enough for me. That that actually just gave me so much confidence just to go and say, right, okay, I can be part of this thing. This is this is going to be this is going to be a really great learning experience and it's something that I'm going to be able to hopefully bring into the workplace and actually get other people um, you know, really thinking about corporate governance in terms of not just in terms of compliance and risk, but in terms of culture and just doing the right things, you know, and getting people to kind of be open and transparent, but, but really focus on doing the right things all the time, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, well, that's wonderful. Do you know, it, it, it occurs to me, and I think uh, Professor Brennan and I have often spoke, spoken about it in terms of the, the, the programme, um, you know, when you go in on the very first day and you're all strangers and uh, actually how you just see those friendships form and form and form. And, and with that becomes a sense of, you know, security in terms of, yeah, I can speak out, I can say things. It becomes a very uh, safe place. But uh, yeah, the role plays are great, uh, Ron and I can, uh, and I'm sure, you, I'm sure you did brilliantly well. Um, you know, look, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of time, but we're, we're motoring along. And, and please feel, for anyone who's attending, if they want to post some questions, please feel free to, to do so. Um, and we'll field those questions to the panel. But can I ask, um, if there were, we, we have, we have a, a, a significant number of people signed up to the next cohort, and, and a lot of these that they are attending today. So they'll be starting um, the next in, in the, the forthcoming academic year of 2021-22. So for the class of 22, um, have you got any advice uh, for attendees starting? Um, and, and, you know, I know, uh, Porik, you mentioned the open book exam. Um, you know, it sounds like a gift. I'm not sure it always is. Um, but I would really welcome your view. Lucy, can I start with you? Any, any advice to, to the class of 2022? Make sure you, you, you are ready for each. You just make sure you're just going to embrace that, that the whole year. It'll be tough work, but it'll be hugely rewarding. Everyone was planking it about this open book exam thing and what I will just say is if you are organized with your notes if you are really strategic about multiple choice questions and if you listen really hard you don't have to listen that hard uh, to the hints that are dropped by uh, by our lecturers you will succeed so just don't get stressed about the exam we all were so worried about that whole aspect of it and really I have to say by the end of the exam it, you'd be going I wish I had more time because once you start writing you can't stop uh, so 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 really I would just say that's the only advice don't be stressing about the small stuff yeah. the lecturers all 
seriously want you to succeed. And that's that's what is so lovely about that programme. Nobody's there to catch you out. Everyone is there to just build a really lovely community. So uh, I would say if you're on the fence, just jump, go for it. You, you really won't look back. Brilliant, Lucy. Thank you so much. Porek, anything to add? Well, I, I, I would add, seeing as I dropped in the open book exam, uh, exactly what Lucy has said is do not be concerned about that. I think the, the program is set up to get people through the exam. And I think the challenge is not having, it, it, it's not people not having enough information. It is how to distill um, what, what, you've, what, you've, what you've acquired um, into, into the questions that are there. Um, and um, I, I think maybe, you know, arrive expecting uh, to enjoy it. And I think it, it, with so many things, you 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 get back at least what you're 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 able to contribute, and in in in, I, in my case, I felt m much more so. Um, so g give what you can, be very open, and uh, I think uh, be 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 aware of what you can learn as much from your classmates as from the the lecturers. Absolutely, Ron. Any other? Yeah, I think. Advice? I Absolutely. I mean, I think that's that you, you get that on the program from the lectures. Um, as Lucy said, you know, there'll be some hints and stuff like that along the way. Um, everyone says, don't worry about it, but but actually you will be worried about it. So 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 better off calling that out. I mean, with some of the stuff that I would I would say is like the MCQs, you know, go back over the MCQs practice those, practice the, the, the answers, um, even sometimes you might know why this, they have that answer, but um, you, you'll, you know, do that practice. I think the assignments are really important. So I think learning from the assignments will give you that practical help during the course. And then the big thing for me was that essential reading. You're not asked to read, you know, 10 articles before a lecture. You're probably only asked to read one or two but those one or two are really important and they'll help you in the exams as well. And then the other thing is, is it depends on your mindset. But if your mindset is, is to be open minded, to be engaged and to go in looking for, not looking for fun, but you will have fun actually on this program. And for me, that was in, enjoying it while you're learning um, made the exams so much easier. So yeah. that's my so wonderful. And, and just to top off what, what, you, what you've all said, I mean, when anyone comes to me to talk about education, I always say, make this an investment in yourself. Just yeah, really yeah. see it as an investment in yourself and immerse yourself. And, and you know, you know, Lucy made the point about kind of rote learning back at, um, you know, even leaving cert and kind of even university to a point. Um, you know, I always say my first day in class when I'm, when I'm with you guys is don't be overly strategic. Sit back, immerse yourself, listen, 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 take it all in. And I think that that's part of the education mm -hmm. process. A couple of questions have come in, I think, that are really important, are really interesting ones. And... Um, one question relates to um, the age profile of the class and is there anyone over 60? And uh, I can say to that participant, I have had plenty of people over 60 and I, and I relish it because can you imagine the wealth of experience uh, that someone who has got 30 or 40 years in professional life brings to a classroom like that? Um, so uh, absolutely, we, have, we, we, we would have diversity, not only in background, but in age profile and, and so on. I mean, obviously, you know, in terms of coming on the program, there is a there's a level of professional um, background that you have to have to come. So that lends itself to it being very, very second. There's a, a real diversity in, in age, and I have definitely seen that diversity myself. Um, another question that's come in um, relates to whether the, the challenge of governance in the public sector, and as much is there much opportunity to learn about and gain expertise in that? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to throw that out if anyone wants to take it. Uh, Ronan, did you? I mean, obviously, yeah. you're I, I think I half the class were from the public sector, um, and um, I, I definitely think anyone who's worked in the public sector would benefit hugely from from this. Um, I mean, it, you know, we talk about corporate governance, but it is about leadership as well. It's about culture. It's about how you how you approach different situations, and and it's also your learning on, you know, shareholder and stakeholder. Uh, management. Um, so, so there's a huge amount in it for, for, for both the private sector and the public sector, I would say. 
Yeah, I mean, the approach of faculty is to kind of take out the, the, the core tenets of a particular module. And, and the encouragement is that you, you, you apply that to your context as well. And what happens in class, for the person who asked that great question, what happens in class then is that the class bring it to life and you see that wonderful cross-sectoral comparison um, and, and critical evaluation and a little bit of slagging at times, but we all love that, so that's good. Um, so I think... Yeah, that's it, exactly, exactly. Um, another question that's come in, and again, a re really good question has come in, and that's really, can I ask the panel how much time they spent on prep for the lectures, the group sessions and assignments at the weekend? Um, and I think that's it's, it's, it's useful at this point um, it, it's interesting at the point is to, to remind everybody that this is a, a full academic year, but it's part time. So it's two evenings a week from 4.30 to 7.30 in terms of lecture delivery. But um, ballpark, can you give me, um, um, you know, Ronan, you're just out of it. Ballpark, uh, an idea of how much time you spent around that. Um, the lectures come around really quickly. Um, you know, you, you, one rolls into another. I think, you know, it depends on the subject matter. <laughs> um, but, you know, like you, if you put in a, a couple of hours uh, before the lecture, I mean, you're going to break it up over the week as, as it's happening. Um, it's really hard to kind of, uh, there is a, in the program, there yeah. is, there is a, you, you do allocate time. And I think you probably just need to increase that by maybe 20% or so. But it just depends because there's certain subjects that you pick up really easily and there's others that you just have to put a bit more work into. So, um, but I certainly think like we would have spent, you know, doing assignments, we would have had, you know, time on Zoom on Saturday mornings and, you know, we'd, we'd pick up again on a Sunday afternoon, we'd, we'd allocate responsibilities for different parts of the assignment and we'd go off and do those and we'd show them back to one another. So we did spend a lot of time on it. And even though it wasn't giving you a huge amount of marks in terms of the overall exam, it gave you a really practical understanding how to of that subject, you know. Yeah. And I often after after a class would hear the laughter of the groups as they as they gathered to so I said there's a lot of gossiping and a lot of and a lot of uh, crack have been had uh, as well as the work. But I think actually for the person who asked that question, every yeah. module coordinator for every module will set out kind of an expectation around times. Um, and, you know, like um, in terms of, uh, you know, three subjects is, is you know, is, is five ECTs and, and they'll give you an idea of kind of the breakout of times. But I certainly think that it wouldn't be unrealistic to be allocating somewhere between 10 to 15 hours in addition to the lectures, maybe. It was, is that, you know, maybe, I, I, just yeah. maybe 10, 10, 10, 10 to 15, depending. Yeah, I think people shouldn't get too head up on that. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. Because I like I'm not your your studious student, you know, I never was. Um, I wasn't really interested. Um, so so if if it was taking me 15 or 20 hours a week on top of the lectures, I, I probably would have been I wouldn't I wouldn't have got through it. So so I'm just saying that you, you learn by really getting involved. I think I don't know, Gordon Lucy, you probably have more more uh, more to add on that one. But yeah, I, I, I think you can do it but but you still have to put the work in, but you don't, it's not, it's not all consuming because you can't, you have a family, you have work, you know, you have life, you have to live. Yeah, exactly. L L Lucio Pork, do you want to jump in there or add anything or I think we're... Margaret, Margaret, we probably should let you drop out of the call and then we'll give you, we'll give everybody... <laughs> <real. laughs> <laughs> well, look, the thing, the thing is like everything, you, you get out of it what you put in. So there is, yes. there is a balance. But, you know, Lucy made the point, there'll, there'll be areas where you've got strengths, there'll be areas where you've got weaknesses that will require more. And I think that... Um, well, I, 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 I'd say, Margaret, I, 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 I thought I was too busy before I even started the programme and um, <laughs> I, 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 I found the time. So some of it was relevant to, to what I was doing. Some of it is interesting in itself, and and that which isn't isn't so interesting, I, I I think you find the time, and it's spread over a time. So I mean, I was doing things an hour here, two hours there, half an hour here. It wasn't taking huge blocks of time out of my normal wor working week, yeah. um, and diverting myself from from, from my work. Um, so I was just actually while I'm when I'm speaking about that uh, for, for the person who's who's over sixty, I, I may as well just say I am because you I, I wasn't a child prodigy like you were trying to let me off the hook, um, and uh, there were there, there were others. So I think the average age um, you 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 know is, is 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 a bit lower, but it's 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 not a problem. And I think for a person who's 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 of that age who's 
even thought about doing it, your 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 mind is still open to doing it, and th- that should not hold you back. Whatever 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 the age is, it's it's more about your 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 outlook and your 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 mindset approaching the course. And um, there's plenty that people like me, but o- others others um, who are older um, were, were were able to contribute. Oh, a million percent. Lucy, this is one for you that's just come in. Um, this is a, 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 an attendee on the call who has been working in the NGO sector abroad and has recently returned to Ireland, um, just getting a few months to settle and so on. Um, and if somebody isn't currently working, will they get as much out of the course? Uh, oh, 100 uh, percent. Like it's I would say if you're not currently working, you've you're you you're going to get so much more out of it um because you'll have more time to be able to uh you know throw yourself into it and uh don't let anyone else in your group know that otherwise you'll end up doing all the group work at the weekends <laughs> no i w- i couldn't recommend it uh highly enough especially for our uh, for our sector there simply aren't it, the governance of the the not for profit sector is one that is it has improved dramatically um but you know, each year somebody earlier was saying, is there, are there a number of public, uh, you know, sector um, people on the course? You know, that's, I, I would love to see more people from the, the charity and not-for-profit sector investing in themselves and investing in the, in, in the sector by doing this course. So no, you'll absolutely love it and you will learn so much. Yeah, fully agree, Lucy, fully agree. Um, good tip on the all assignments though, Lucy, I like that. Okay. Um, just one more question that's come in, and um, this is from um, the question relates to, is there an emphasis on CSR, a corporate social responsibility at board level in the programme? Um, and there is, and, and, and again, this is a lot to do with the evolution of the programme. So uh, there is, um, you know, historically before um, ESG was very much a part, which I feel is the new buzzword for CSR in my, in my humble view, but, um, or, you know, CSR was part of, I suppose, a, a, a stakeholder theoretical view of the world, which we'd bring in and then it would be brought into strategy later on. But now with um, the module four, which is responsibilities of the board, we take quite a significant ESG slash CSR um, focus on, on, uh, um, on aspects of governance. So there, there absolutely is. Um, and, uh, and, and that's explored. And, and actually, I, I've been working on, the, on that material over the last number of weeks and really look, trying to build a picture in relation to kind of you know all, all of the various uh, stakeholders within that world of CSR, from regulators to to asset owners to to boards and so on. So we, we look at the whole ecosystem um, in module four on that. So so thank you for that really good question. Okay, I've been told I've been told that that should be the last question by um, and the uh, um, power So. Um, Look, you know, I mentioned early on um, my two favourite things in life. I, I won't tell my husband this, but my, 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 my children, okay, that, them aside, after them, my favourite things in life, governance and education. So passionate about both. And I think for everyone who who, who is involved in this programme, I think that that passion oozes. And I hope that the participants agree with that. Um, you know, we're very proud of our programme and we're very proud of putting our the students who sign up at the centre of everything we do. And I think that that's come out brilliantly. Um, through the engagement and through the, the contributions of, of the participants on the panel today. Um, I'd like to thank um, Ronan, Porrick and Lucy so much for your openness and frankness and, um, and, and thank you so much. Um, and um, you know, thank you for su- supporting the programme, but I, but, I, but I know that you can only do that if you had a good experience. So, so glad that you did. And, uh, so luck to everyone out there if you are, who are, who's listening. Um, if you want to talk um, more to Annie, um, uh, anyone else about the programme, please reach out to um, to, to Kini or, or, or the programme manager or um, Caroline Kinsley in UCD stuff. It's plenty of people, including myself, who are very um, willing to speak to you um, and uh, make that investment in yourself and go forth and govern everyone. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks so much. Um, I just want to echo the thanks to uh, Porig, Ronan and Lucy for joining us this evening it, it, or this morning. Even. It means so much to uh, potential future uh, participants of the programme, really to hear it from yourselves, what, uh, what actually happens in the programme. And thank you so much, uh, Margaret, for hosting this morning. Um, I, I'm just going to come in and tell you a few practical details about the programme for anyone who's interested in joining. So I'll just share my screen now. But what I'll also do is I'll be sending you an email after the event. So please do get back to me if you're interested in joining because um, there are actually only 10 places remaining and uh, they tend to fill up fast. So there's no pressure of taking a place, but just do let me know if you're interested and I can hold your spot. 
So I'm just going to um, share my screen now and uh, hopefully you'll all be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah, just checking, Margaret, you can see that there, can you? I can, Maria. Yeah, you're good Great. to go. Thank you. Um, so as you see, um, so as, as was mentioned before, you probably heard um, Professor Neve Brennan's name mentioned a couple of times. So um, she is the academic director of the program and she'll actually be teaching you on your first module. Um, so it's starting actually on Tuesday, the 7th of September, rather than the Monday, because your first module is going to run a little bit differently. It's on a Tuesday and a Wednesday rather than the normal Monday and Tuesday evening. And um, also, as you've heard mentioned, it runs. Uh, so it does run every Monday, Tuesday evening from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. And actually, the we, we didn't get to talk about them today, but um, there are two weekends away as part of um, the program, which I, I you know, it's a really good opportunity to um, sort of do an intensive module, but also a good bonding experience, I think, with your fellow students sort of to get away and um, enjoy each other's company. So the good news or hopefully good news for all of you is that we are planning to be back in Smurfit Executive Development and in our UCD Michael Graduate uh, Business School campus in Black Rock. And um, this coming September, obviously, depending on government um, uh, regulations, but that is the plan for the moment. You see the fees there of uh, 15,325 um, for the full academic year, and that includes um, all academic material and your refreshments and dinner on campus. And there is a UCD business alumni discount if you um, did your undergraduate degree in uh, the business, uh, UCD business. So we normally have 25 to 30 people on the class um, each term. It looks like it's going to be 30 this year. So it's great to have such a big cohort because as, as we've spoken before, um, it's really a diverse, experienced group, public sector um, and corporate sector um, and coming from all walks of life. And obviously that really leads to um, the classroom experience as our alumni have spoken about today. Um, that's, um, I won't go through them at all, but that just gives you an idea of the content um, on the programme. So they're the list of the modules that you do. And I suppose the difference between our corporate governance uh, programme and other ones that you might be considering is really that ours is a lot broader. Um, I think than other ones, obviously we cover all the important aspects that you need to know and be grounded in like the regulatory framework, direct responsibilities. But we also focused on things like marketing and behavior aspects of boards that are becoming um, all the more important. And I think this really um, grounds the program and I think adds to um, the enjoyment of the program because of it covers um, so many areas. Um, and then I suppose last to say, so there, that's a, a picture of our lovely campus in Blackrock. Um, and um, just really to say to you, if you have any interest in, um, in applying for the course or finding out more, you can contact me um, at the details there on the screen. But I'll also be sending an email um, afterwards um, and uh, you can contact me directly. All right. So, look, I won't take up uh, any more of your morning and um, I'll let you all get back to your day jobs. Just really appreciate you all joining us this morning. And thanks again to Margaret for ho uh, hosting and to Ronan, Lucy and Padre for joining us. Take care. Oh. Stay safe, everyone. All bye -bye. right. Bye bye. bye, -bye.